All right, let's talk about decentralized lending and borrowing. One of the biggest services offered by the financial industry is the lending and borrowing of funds made possible by the concept of credit collateralization. It can be argued that the invention of commercial scale lending and borrowing was what brought about the Renaissance age as the possibility for the less wealthy to acquire startup funds led to a flurry of economic activity. This then led to the economy growing at an unprecedented pace. Entrepreneurs can borrow the upfront capital needed to establish a business by just collateralizing the company assets. Families can get a mortgage for a house that would otherwise be too expensive to buy in cash by using the house as collateral. On the other hand, the wealth accumulated can be lent out as capital to borrowers. This system reduces the risk of borrowers absconding or making away with the borrowed funds. However, this system requires some form of trust and an intermediary. Banks have historically taken up an, that intermediary position with, while a convoluted credit system maintains trust. In the legacy credit system, borrowers must exhibit the ability to repay the loan to be qualified to borrow, among a laundry list of other qualifications and requirements by the banks. Enter decentralized lending and borrowing. This has led to various challenges and shortfalls of the current lending and borrowing system. Such shortfalls are as restrictive funding criteria, geographical or legal restrictions to access banks, high barriers to loan acceptance, and the exclusivity of only the wealthy to enjoy the benefits of low risk, high return lending. But in the DeFi landscape, such barriers don't exist as banks are no longer the intermediaries. They're no longer necessary. With enough collateral, anyone can have access to capital to do whatever they want. Capital lending is also no longer enjoyed only by the wealthy. Everyone can contribute to a decentralized liquidity pool that borrowers can take from and pay back at an algorithmically determined interest rate. In contrast to applying for a loan from the bank where they are stringent, know your customer and anti-money laundering policies, one only needs to provide collateral to take a loan in DeFi. I'm gonna now explore with you guys how such a bankless lending and borrowing mechanism is possible with Compound Finance and Aave. These are the two leading DeFi lending borrowing protocols. Let's look at Compound Finance. Compound Finance is an Ethereum-based open source money market protocol where anyone can lend or borrow crypto frictionlessly. There are currently nine different tokens available on the Compound platform as of 2021, the OX or the ZRX, Basic Attention Token or BAT, Compound, COMP, DAI, DAI, ETH, USDC, and USDT, Uniswap, Wrapped Bitcoin, it's important to note that USDT is the only token that cannot be used as collateral because its fee structure could potentially impact Compound's liquidity mechanism. Compound operates as a liquidity pool built on the Ethereum blockchain. Suppliers supply assets to the liquidity pool to earn interest while borrowers take a loan from the liquidity pool and pay interest on their debt. In essence, Compound bridges the gaps between lenders who wish to accrue interest from idle funds and borrowers who want to borrow funds for productive or investment use. In Compound, interest rates are denoted in annual percentage yield, APY, and the interest rates differ between assets. Compound derives the interest rates using algorithms that take into account the supply and demand of the assets. Essentially, Compound lowers the friction for lending or borrowing by allowing suppliers and borrowers to interact directly with the protocol for interest rates without needing to negotiate loan terms. Loan terms such as maturity, interest rate, counterparty, collaterals, 
All of that is eliminated, thereby creating a more efficient money market. So how much interest will you receive or pay? The annual percentage yield or APY differs between assets as it is algorithmically set based on the supply and demand of the various assets. Generally, the higher the borrowing demand, the higher the interest rate and vice versa. Using the DAI stablecoin as an example, a lender would earn 4.45% APY as of 2020, uh, 2021 in a year, while a borrower would be paying 6.44% APY interest yet after a year. You do not need to register for an account, and that's the beauty of decentralized finance applications. Unlike traditional finance applications where users must go through lengthy processes to get started, Compound users do not need to register for anything. Anyone with a supported cryptocurrency wallet such as Argent or MetaMask can start using Compound immediately. Compound became progressively decentralized since its inception and has transitioned into a fully community-powered protocol using the introduction of the COMP governance token. Comp holders can suggest, debate, and implement changes to Compound uh, through a voting process on the Compound's voting decentralized application. Some of the changes that governance can make to the Compound protocol include the addition of new assets or system parameter adjustments such as collateral factors or interest rate algorithms. Let's talk about how the Compound governance work. There are three core components in governing the Compound protocol. First is the Comp token, Second is the governance module. And third is the time lock. To table a governance proposal, an address, also known as a delegate, must have more than 1% of the total comp supply of 10 million delegated to it. That's 100,000 COMP. This stage is known as the governor alpha. Once submitted, there's a three-day voting period where a minimum of 400,000 votes must be received by a comp token Holder. The quorum is 4% of the total comp supply. Once a minimum threshold of votes has been received, past proposals will be queued in the time lock. There will be a two-day grace period before past proposals are implemented into the compound protocol. Users can obtain comp tokens by buying them off the secondary markets or yield farming the comp tokens by lending or borrowing on the compound protocol. Comp tokens are distributed on a pro rata basis based on the interest rates of lending and borrowing activity on the compound. To earn interest, you will have to supply assets to the protocol and compound accepts nine types of tokens. Once you have deposited your assets into compound, you'll immediately begin to earn interest on your deposits. Interest is accrued on the amount supplied and calculated after each Ethereum block, which is average 15 seconds. Upon deposit, you will receive corresponding amounts of C tokens. If you supply DAI, stable coins, you will receive C DAI. If you supply ETH, you will receive C ETH, and so on. Interest is not immediately distributed, but instead accrues on the C tokens and is redeemable for underlying asset and interest it represents. It's important to note that USDT is the only asset that cannot be used as collateral because, and this is because of the counterparty exposure risk. Users will need to trust that every USDT is fully backed one-to-one -one with USD and the reserve exists. Compound fears that an infinite quantity of USDT could be minted to drain assets from the protocol. Let's talk about C tokens. C tokens represent your balance in the protocol and accrue interest over time. In compound, interest earned is not distributed immediately, but instead accrues in C tokens. All right, let's talk about this with an example. Assume that you have supplied a thousand die, that's a thousand dollars. Yeah, and an API has been constant at about 10% throughout the year. After you've deposited a thousand die, you will begin. You'll be given a thousand C die. In this case, the exchange rate between die and C die is one to one. 
as of 2021, after one year, your 1000 CDI will now increase in value by 10%. The new exchange rate between DAI and CDI is one to one. Your 1000 CDI is now redeemable for 1000 DAI. If you deposit 1000 DAI, you receive 1000 CDI. Exchange rate, one CDI is to one DAI. A year later, you receive 1100 CDI. At a rate of one CDI is to 1.1 DAI. To account for interest accrued, C tokens become convertible into an increasing amount of the underlying asset it represents over time. C tokens are also ERC20 tokens, meaning you can easily transfer the ownership of supplied assets if someone wants to take over your position as a supplier. Before borrowing, you have to supply assets into the system as collateral for your loan. The more assets that you supply into Compound, the greater the amount that you can borrow. Additionally, each asset supplied has a different collateral factor that determines the amount you can borrow. Borrowed assets are sent directly to your Ethereum wallet and from there, you can use them as you would any crypto asset. It's important to note that a portion of the interest paid by the borrower will go to its reserve which acts as the insurance and is controlled by the compound token holders. Each supported asset has its reserve factor that will determine how much goes into the reserve. So if you're thinking about depositing your assets as collateral to take a loan, you may wonder what happens if the value of that collateral changes. In the first instance, if collateral value moves up, if the value of your asset you use as collateral goes up, your collateral ratio also goes up, which is fine. Nothing will happen and you can draw a bigger loan if you would like to. But if your collateral value goes down on the other hand, such that your collateral ratio is now below the required collateral ratio, your collateral will be partially sold off along with an 8% liquidation fee. The process of selling off your collateral to achieve the minimum collateral ratio is known as liquidation. Nobody likes to be liquidated. Liquidation occurs when the value of the collateral provided is less than the borrowed funds. Liquidation happens to ensure that there will always be excess liquidity for withdrawal and borrowing of funds, protecting lenders against default risk. The current liquidation fee is 8%. Receive C tokens when you sign up for a fixed deposit the bank will issue a fixed deposit certificate as proof of placement. Similarly, after supplying crypto into the pool, you will get C tokens, which represent the type and amount of assets you've deposited. The C tokens act as a claim of deposit and record the interest you earn. Likewise, you have to use it to redeem or withdraw your assets. As soon as it's deposited, you begin earning interest and you start to earn the interest the moment your deposit assets are received. C tokens in return. By holding the C tokens, the interest will accrue on your account. Over time, the interest accumulates and each C token is convertible into a greater value of underlying assets. You can redeem the C tokens anytime and receive the assets back to your wallet instantly. Before you can start borrowing, you are required to supply assets into, into the compound as a form of collateral. USDT cannot be used as collateral for borrowing funds. Each token has its own collateral factor. A collateral factor is the ratio of how much you have to supply in order to borrow. You cannot supply and borrow the same token at the same time. The first step is to go to the compound's main page at app.compound.finance Choose which tokens you wish to borrow or choose USDC. A pop-up on USDC will appear. Each token has to be enabled individually. You only need to do this once per token. Next step is to enter the amount that we wish to borrow. In this example, we borrow two USDC. Then we confirm the transaction with your wallet. And that's it. You're done. You can see how much you have supplied and how much you have borrowed Come on Compound's main page. 
let's talk about Aave. Aave is another prominent decentralized money market protocol. As of April 2021, users can lend and borrow 24 different assets on Aave. Notably, Aave offers more assets for users to lend and borrow as compared to Compound. Both Compound and Aave operate similarly where lenders can provide liquidity by depositing cryptocurrencies into the available lending pools and earn interest. Borrowers can take loans by tapping into these liquidity pools and paying interest. Aave is more complex than Compound, and here's how. It offers more flexibility and features. Let's talk about the eight key features on Aave. The Aave platform supports more assets. Aave offers 24 assets for lending and borrowing. Aave has historically been quick in adding more assets to its platform. Borrowers have the flexibility to choose between stable or variable interest rates. The third key feature is that borrowers are also able to switch between stable and variable interest rates. The fourth key feature is that borrowers can swap their collateral for another asset. This helps to prevent loans from going below the minimum collateral ratio and face liquidation. Also with Aave, borrowers can close their loan positions by paying directly with their collateral in one transaction. Now this enables flash loans. Since borrowers can take up loans with zero collateral, if the borrower repays the loan and any additional interest and flash loan fees within the same transaction. Flash loans are useful for arbitrage traders as they are capital efficient in making arbitrage trades across the various DeFi. Let's talk about flash liquidations. Liquidators can utilize flash loans to borrow capital as part of their liquidation bond and get that liquidation bonus without using their capital. Another key feature is that borrowers may extend their credit line to other users who wish to borrow without collateral for a higher interest rate. How much interest will you receive or pay? Like Compound, the interest rates for both borrowers and lenders are determined algorithmically and they're also subjected to the supply and demand for each asset. Essentially, the higher the borrowing demand, the higher the interest rate due to less available liquidity in the pool. When this happens, lenders will earn more. Lenders who deposit their USDT can earn 5.99% APY Borrowers, meanwhile, have the option to choose a loan with a variable or stable interest rate. Decentralized lending and borrowing variable interest rate for USDT was 3.97% APR, while the stable interest rate for USDT was 11.99% APR.